Hey guys, and welcome back. Today we're discussing how to design things for 3D printing. And as always, we're not just discussing, I'm actually going to design and print a full-size prop from the Mandalorian movie. So if you're new here, welcome. My name's Austin. I do full-time engineering design and 3D printing. I can design and print just about anything. And if you're here watching, I assume you're either looking to get into design and printing or you might already be on your way. Heck, you might even be looking to take on some design and print work as a career or a side hustle. No matter where you're at in the process, let's just jump into it because there is lots to cover. So first things first, my inbox is full of this question and that is what software do you use? And personally, I use and recommend Fusion 360. It's really not even a debate. Fusion 360 is in my opinion and the opinion of a lot of people that I talk to and work with the best option for learning and doing design work. It's also 100% free for personal and hobby use, which really is incredible. I can't emphasize that enough. It's completely free to start. I'll put the download link below. You can use Fusion 360 for designing everything from like a simple pencil holder all the way to complex automotive parts. If you look around your room right now, 99% or more of the items that you will see can probably be designed in Fusion 360. So actually, let's go into that. On that topic, when you look around, pick an object in your room and you'll notice that the object is probably made from nothing more than a bunch of basic shapes. For me, I'm personally staring at a giant wall of filament spools, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of those and then we can take a look. We can see that this filament spool here is really nothing more than a couple of circles. We have a big circle on each side and then in between them connecting it is a smaller circle or a cylinder. That's really all it is and why I am mentioning this is because the same application of taking basic geometric shapes and combining them to create something is essentially the premise and the foundation for engineering design. So on a side note and in general, basic fundamental shapes also tend to have superior mechanical performance, okay? There's a reason that the big buildings outside that you see, they are generally just giant rectangular prisms and not some crazy curved shape. You probably heard this one before, but bridges are often supported by triangles and not some crazy uh, support design. Design. And lastly, uh, a rocket ship, for example, visually, it's basically just a cylinder, three triangles and a dome. So fortunately, that phenomenon actually makes our job as a designer, someone who designs practical things, a lot easier than it sounds. And yes, yes, I am obviously oversimplifying and generalizing. But the point is, once you see objects from a design perspective, we can kind of work backwards and break them down into simple components, which then helps us visualize and go through the process of actually building something from scratch. So when it comes to designing specifically for 3D printing, there are some things that we need to consider because 3D printing does have some limitations. The most obvious and the most easy to actually account for is overhangs, okay? You can't just 3D print an object in midair because the 3D printer starts laying material from the base and therefore the geometry of the part must be suitable for 3D printing. And if that doesn't make sense or if I'm losing you, uh, here's a quick example, okay? The object on the left here will require what's called supports or support material while the object here on the right will not. And if that still doesn't make sense, then don't worry about it. The point is, is that if we keep 3D printing in mind while we're designing, we'll actually save ourselves a lot of print time and material. So just for another practical example that is specific to 3D printing is tolerances, okay? When you're making two parts that fit together, maybe you want a really tight fit or maybe you want a really loose fit. Either way, you need to know what the size difference between those two objects should be to determine how the corresponding fit will work. So for example, a 12 inch sphere will not fit through a 12 inch circle. However, it might fit through a 12.01 inch circle. Hopefully that kind of clarifies what tolerance is. So in the description, there is a link to a video playlist on Fusion 360 for 3D printing. I obviously can't show you how to design everything in just this simple uh, five to 10 minute YouTube video here, but that course there, which is 100% free, is basically everything that I learned in engineering school plus in industry and that's now what I do for full-time work. So I'm active there and I'm uploading new lessons at least once a week. So go ahead, check that out if you're interested in really learning how to design. It's basically something I wish that I had when I started out. So I just decided what the heck, I'll make it for myself. Now it likely won't be free forever. So if you jump in right now at no cost, that's probably, uh, this is probably a good time and option. And I am sorry if you thought that after this video alone, you'd be ready uh, to just design and 3D print anything. Unfortunately, there is a little bit more to it than that. And it is important to learn how to do it correct the first times that you can design things efficiently. But let's continue on because we are indeed doing some design work in this video here. So we know that design work is basically combining basic shapes to create objects. I thought a really fun one to do for this video would be something from uh, the Mandalorian movie. So let's go ahead and let's just pick a prop because A, it's fun to do and B, props seem to be a popular thing among the 3D printing community. But it also really does just show the power of combining simple shapes to make something that is practical. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this photo right here of the Mandalorian and I'm actually going to create 
create the prop right here in Fusion 360. And then let's go ahead and let's 3D print it for us to see. So I will note the files will also be available for free using the link in the description. So if you're just here to scrape the files, honestly, that's fine. They're there for your personal use. I'll even include the actual Fusion 360 file so you can modify my design. You can put your name on it. You can change the size. You can change some components, whatever you want. Uh, so let's go ahead. Here is a sped up version of the design process so that we can see how just using those basic shapes, we can create something really cool. Now, the first part is actually the most complicated part of the whole design because it's using what's called the spline tool. This is just a fast way to make curved lines. This was just for the base. Now, following this part, we can see that basically the entire thing is made of a series of lines, rectangles, and circles, even the more complex looking shapes, such as the pointed ends here. All this is, is a couple of lines put together, created a base basic shape and then that shape is revolved around a center line to create a solid component. Even at the very end of the prop, the kind of crazier looking side, it's basically just a combination of a triangle and a rectangle with some linear cutouts. I do want to note that with design, there's usually a ton of different ways to make something, but there's always, or at least almost always a most efficient way to make it. So for example, on the top, the scope part here, you'll see it's essentially a cylinder with a couple of smaller and larger cylinders attached for the detailing, but this can also be made with one simple quick sketch. And then what you do is you take that sketch and you revolve it around 360 degrees there to make the solid component. So this is again, just back to my point where if you know how to design efficiently, you will save a ton of time and actually your files will also be a lot easier to edit and look at for revisions in the future. Now, towards the end of this design, what I basically do is add on a lot more detail by cutting out pieces according to what I can see in that original photo. Now, is this going to be exact? Well, absolutely not. I don't have the exact dimensions or an actual replica to pull some measurements from. So no, it's not going to be exact. However, we can see the relative size and the detail. And so for a simple duplication, it is definitely a good enough representation. Again, all that we're doing is we're pretty much using basic shapes with some small tips and tricks here and there to expedite the process, such as at Revolve that you saw earlier. But we can see that even the actual detailing on the side of the prop, it starts with nothing but a square and some polygons. I'm actually gonna export some renders of this so that we can see the final result. And then let's go ahead, let's get this printed and in our hands. So I split up the model here and I will be printing it pretty fast on a Prusa MK3S. Now, if you're looking to get into printing, I highly recommend either an Ender 3 or a Prusa to start. I'll put some more information and links to those below as well. But in total, the prop is about 16 pieces plus the small pegs and holes that I've added so that we can go ahead and put it together easily. But the pieces will probably fit on one or two build plates. So it should be pretty fast to print. And again, the reason that it's going to be fast to print is because it was designed with 3D printing in mind. So there's actually zero supports required to print this design, which should say, save us not only material, but also print time. Now, before I show you the final result, I do want to take a minute and talk about angle.io as they are the sponsor of this video. If you're into design and you want to make money from your designs and definitely listen up for a second, because here is a good opportunity. So angle.io is an online storefront that helps us, the 3d designers produce any product that we can imagine and design using the biggest consumer printing farm in the world. So what you do, after you finish your design in Fusion 360, simply export it as a .stl file. You can then take that .stl file and submit the design to the Angle storefront where it's displayed to thousands of customers who can buy prints of your design. So then when a customer purchases your item, Angle literally does everything. They print it, they ship it, they handle the customer service while all you do is simply receive your commission. So if you're doing any design work, you may as well upload it there if you wanna make some extra money. You also have full control over your designs as they're always securely stored in the Angle database. Personally, one of my favorites, I really, really like 3D printing architecture. It's actually where I started my design and printing career. And Angle.io has some great pieces like the Manhattan Cityscape and the Roman Coliseum replica. So do be sure to check those out and use the code Hartley10 for 10% off at checkout. And without further ado, here is the prop. One of the best things about design and printing is the ability to take something from an idea to a design all the way to something tangible. I just think it's the coolest thing ever. Literally every time I do it, or I see someone do it, I'm just amazed. And I'm pretty happy with the way that this prop here turned out. Again, the files for this, including the actual Fusion 360 files. Yes, I'm giving you those. They are all available for free using the link below. If you have any questions at all about design for 3D printing, please drop a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. I'll also post some more information in the description about design so you can use that for reference as well. 
Basically, in summary, hopefully this video helps you a little bit if you're thinking about getting into design for 3D printing. If you're even debating it, just do it because again, you can start for completely free and I wish that I did it earlier. I highly recommend it to everyone. What I wanted to do is show you how basic shapes are combined to create complex objects that we can then make using Fusion 360. So from this video here, you will have access to the free video series that's linked below on using Fusion 360. You can then actually even upload the designs that you make to angel.io and make money for them. So it's really full circle and I do look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. So thank you so much for checking it out. Be sure to like and subscribe this video if you are interested in more free files and more practical information like this. So until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.